In this movie, we'll kind of dovetail into the last movie, and that was looking at the graph editor and managing curves and splines to control motion. The reason this dovetails is that the feature we're looking at is cycling, and you access it the same way working on the keyframes with the same keyboard shortcuts, but it has a very, very different effect on how your animation behaves. One thing we did is put in a little bit of noise, a noise tweener, and just in case you're wondering where that term comes from, the distance between keyframes is between the keyframes. So anytime you modify a curve, the industry nickname for that is tweening, adjusting how the animation behaves between the keyframes. I'll turn this back to smooth. I'll select that keyframe, and I'll just select smooth. We'll see it smooth out so we have a nice path again. What I want to do is show you two different ways to work with cycling in this and show you that they don't always show up in the graph editor and behave differently. The two things we're going to do is make this object right here change color over time and then back again. And we also want it to make it change shape over time and back again, but we want to do it while it animates along this path. That could be a potential animation nightmare with keyframing, or at least a ton of work, unless you use cycling. So let's take a look at that. The first thing, since we're in the graph editor right now, is we're going to change the size of this. So I'll move to keyframe one. I'll select the layer scale tool. Click on that and we've got a keyframe added, but let's open up scale so we can see that. Or in theory we should, if we didn't, I'll show you how there's a little a little shortcut we can do. I'll go ahead and right click on that. We'll just say add keyframe. And I am not seeing one show up for scale. So let me double click on that. There we go. See if we can do that now. There we go. There's our keyframe. So at, well, let's say one second, I'm going to move our timeline indicator over to frame 24. But now I'm going to, well, actually, that's, that's too soon. I'm going to go ahead and move it back here to something more like 12, so at a half second. I'm going to go ahead and drag this and stretch out our object. We can see we've got a keyframe added. And you may wonder, what are these multiple keyframes? Well, that's because you can control the object in the X, Y, and Z axis. And so if you've got the Z capability, which we don't in this one with the scale editor, you can actually keyframe each one of those axis controls independently. I'll come back to this keyframe, choose copy. I'll move back to our 24 frame or our one second and choose paste. And so now that has pasted in there and we get this little pulsing here. It gets bigger and then it gets smaller. Easy enough. Well, let's go ahead and select this keyframe down here and now we'll go to right click or control click if you're on the Mac and come down to cycle. Get a little dialog that pops up and says, hey, you've got two options. Absolute where you tell me exactly what frame you want this to go back to or we can do it relatively and you can say, oh, go back 10 frames. No matter where you are on the timeline, it'll go back 10 frames. I want absolute, I want this to come back to time frame zero or time frame one, I mean. I'll select OK. And you'll notice now down here in our editor, we have got this little arrow that points backwards. And it may be kind of hard to see on your screen, but it also has a red line that shows you what frame it's going back to. So now if I grab the timeline indicator and move this, we'll see that it's still getting bigger and still getting smaller, but it's doing it all by itself. We can also see in the actual line editor that we get this nice little waveform in here of that changing so we can see very visually what's going on. Well, let's change color. We'll come back to time frame one. I'll open our settings and I'll make sure that we have color showing. We have over here fill color and we have selected fill color. I'll select OK, but you'll notice you don't see that showing up over here if I scroll we seem to be missing that icon. Something important to note is that if non-motion behaviors that you want to cycle don't show up in the curve editor or the graph editor here, they show up in the regular standard mode. So let's disable graph editing. I'll click off that to make the dialog box go away. And I'll go ahead and we've got our selected fill color here. So I'm going to come to our fill color tools. I'll click once on that. Let me double click. And I wanted to add a keyframe right there. That's not happening. So I'll control click and say add keyframe. I should say control click or right click. 
Now we've got a keyframe at 1, but now at frame 24, I'm going to change this to blue. And then I'm going to come back, select this keyframe, copy this keyframe, and at 48, I'm going to say paste. It's back to white. So now when we scrub the timeline, we see this object changing color at a different rate than the scales changing, but it's doing it all automatically. That's the beauty of working with cycling, is that you can get some very complex motion to just kind of automate and do things itself. Well, what's the next step then? The next step is to go ahead and add this to a figure where you may have common behavior. For example, walking. See you in the next movie.